I never thought a regular afternoon at school would turn into something I would think about long after it was over, as it was that exciting. It was supposed to be just another predictable day, but it wasn't. It was the day everything changed. Mr. Harris was the kind of teacher everyone liked. He had this easygoing confidence about him, never raising his voice but still managing to keep the room under control. He was in his late thirties, with dark hair that was starting to gray slightly at the edges, giving him that mature, distinguished look. I guess you could say I admired him, maybe even a little more than I should have. But it wasn't something I dwelled on, at least not until that day. I had stayed late in class, something I often did when I needed extra time to catch up on assignments. The last bell had rung a while ago, and the rest of the students had filed out in their usual hurry to escape. I wasn't in any rush. Sitting there in the quiet classroom felt peaceful. The only sounds were the faint rustling of my papers and the occasional soft creak of the wooden floor. Mr. Harris was still at his desk, grading papers or preparing for the next day's lesson. I didn't really pay attention. But then, I felt it. That moment when you realize someone's watching you. Slowly, I glanced up, and sure enough, his eyes were on me, his expression unreadable yet somehow intent. You're still here? His voice was soft, smooth like it always was, but there was a strange weight to it. I couldn't quite place it, but it made me sit up a little straighter, my heart suddenly picking up speed. Yeah, I replied, trying to sound casual, but I could hear the nervousness in my voice. Just finishing up this assignment. It's taking me longer than I thought. He nodded, his gaze steady as he stood up from his desk and began walking slowly toward me. You've always been one of the more dedicated students, he said, stopping just beside my desk. His eyes held mine in a way that felt different, intense. I admire that. Admire? That word coming from him did something to me. I felt my face warm as I quickly looked down at my papers, pretending to focus on them. Thanks, I mumbled, feeling my palms start to sweat. Why was I suddenly so nervous? For a moment he didn't say anything and I didn't dare look up. The silence stretched between us, thick with something unspoken, something I didn't fully understand but could feel in the air around us. Then, finally, I glanced at him. He wasn't looking at my work. He was looking at me, his gaze soft but searching, like he was trying to see something beyond the surface. My heart pounded harder in my chest, a heavy, rhythmic beat that I was sure he could hear. You don't have to rush, he said, his voice gentler now. It's just you and me here. Those words hit me harder than I expected. Just you and me. My breath hitched slightly as I looked at him, realizing how close he was standing, close enough that I could smell the faint scent of his cologne, something musky and warm. The room suddenly felt too small, like the walls were closing in around us, trapping me in this moment I wasn't prepared for. Right, I said my voice barely above a whisper. I couldn't bring myself to say more, couldn't tear my eyes away from his. It was like I was frozen, stuck in this charged space between us. He took a step closer, and my breath caught in my throat. You've been a bit distracted lately, he said, his eyes never leaving mine. I've noticed. His tone was soft, almost caring, but there was something else there too something that sent a shiver down my spine. I opened my mouth to respond, to explain, but the words wouldn't come. What could I say? How could I explain the thoughts that had been swirling in my head, thoughts I hadn't even admitted to myself? I... I didn't mean to be, I stammered, feeling my face heat up even more. My hands gripped the edge of my desk tightly, trying to ground myself in the moment, but it wasn't working. I felt like I was floating, like nothing was real anymore except for the two of us. He smiled then, a soft, knowing smile that made my stomach twist in knots. It's okay, he said, his voice low and comforting. We all get distracted sometimes. He reached out then, his hand resting gently on my arm. 
The touch was light, almost innocent, but it sent a jolt of electricity through me. My entire body stiffened, and I felt my breath catch in my throat again. His hand was warm, comforting, but there was something more to it, something that made my skin tingle and my heart race. His fingers lingered for just a moment longer than they should have before he pulled back, and the absence of his touch left me feeling cold, empty. I'm always here if you need to talk, he said, his voice soft, his eyes holding mine again. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. My mind was racing, a thousand thoughts colliding all at once, but none of them made sense. All I knew was that something had changed between us, something subtle but undeniable. I didn't know what to do with that knowledge, didn't know how to process the way my body was reacting to him, the way my heart wouldn't stop racing. The silence stretched on, heavy and thick with the weight of everything unsaid. I could feel it, pressing down on me, suffocating me in a way that was both terrifying and exhilarating. I wanted to break it, to say something, anything, but the words were stuck in my throat. Then, without warning, he stood up and walked toward the door. My heart sank, thinking he was going to leave, that this moment was over. But he didn't leave. Instead, he reached for the lock and turned it with a quiet click. My heart skipped a beat. He turned back toward me, his expression softer now, but there was something else in his eyes, something that made my skin prickle with anticipation. We're alone now, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I could hardly breathe. My chest tightened as the reality of the situation sunk in. We were alone, completely utterly alone, and I didn't know what was about to happen next. But I knew, deep down, I wasn't ready to stop whatever this was. He walked back over to me, his steps slow and deliberate, his gaze never wavering from mine. My heart pounded in my ears, each beat louder than the last, as he stopped just inches away from me, close enough that I could feel the heat radiating off him. His presence was overwhelming intoxicating, and I found myself leaning slightly forward, drawn to him in a way I couldn't explain. And then he reached out, his hand brushing a strand of hair from my face. The touch was soft, almost tender, and it sent a shiver down my spine. His fingers lingered against my skin, his eyes searching mine, and in that moment, I knew there was no going back. After that first kiss, things between James and me shifted. Every look he gave me in class, every accidental touch, every word he spoke seemed to carry a new, electrifying energy. It was as if a door had been opened, and now neither of us could pretend to ignore what was on the other side. I found myself staying after class more often, under the excuse of needing help with assignments, but we both knew it was something else drawing me to him. It wasn't about homework or school, it was about the pull between us. One rainy afternoon, a week after our first kiss, I lingered in the classroom longer than usual. The rain pattered against the windows, making the room feel even more isolated. When the last student left, I looked up to find James watching me, his gaze intense and unreadable. He didn't say anything as he stood and locked the door, the sound of the click sending a shiver down my spine. I couldn't stop thinking about you, he said softly, his voice thick with emotion. Every time I see you, I... It's like I'm losing control. My heart raced as he stepped closer, and before I could even process what was happening, his lips were on mine again. This time there was no hesitation. The kiss was deep and urgent, filled with everything we'd been holding back. I felt his hands slide down to my waist, pulling me closer, and I responded instinctively, wrapping my arms around his neck. It was as if the world outside didn't exist. It was just us, tangled up in this forbidden moment, every thought drowned out by the sheer intensity of it all. But then the reality of what we were doing hit me like a splash of cold water. I pulled away, gasping for breath, my mind spinning. James, we can't... What if someone finds out? I whispered, looking at the locked door nervously. 
He shook his head, his eyes dark with longing. I know, but I can't stay away from you. The tension in the room was almost suffocating. We both knew this was dangerous, that we were crossing a line we could never uncross, but the pull between us was stronger than the fear. With a trembling hand, I reached up and touched his cheek. Then, we'll be careful, I murmured, barely recognizing my own voice. No one has to know. He leaned into my touch, closing his eyes as if savoring the moment. We'll be careful, he agreed softly. But I need you to know that this isn't just some fling for me. I'm serious about you. His words took my breath away. The weight of them, the sincerity in his gaze, made everything feel even more dangerous, and yet, somehow, more thrilling. We stood there for what felt like an eternity, the air between us charged and electric. I knew then that there was no turning back. Whatever this was, whatever it would become, we were in it together. After that day, our affair became a secret dance. Every glance across the classroom, every touch that lingered just a moment too long, every whispered word when no one else was around, all of it felt like a forbidden game we couldn't stop playing. We found stolen moments whenever we could, in empty classrooms, in the library when everyone else had left, even in the narrow space between the lockers where no one could see us. One afternoon, just as school ended, I was walking down the empty hallway when I felt a hand gently grab my wrist. I turned to find James standing in the shadows, his eyes dark with an intensity that sent a thrill through me. Come with me, he murmured, glancing around to make sure no one was watching. He led me into a small storage room and closed the door behind us, the space so cramped that I could feel his body pressed against mine. We shouldn't be here, I whispered, my voice trembling. I know, he breathed, his lips brushing against my ear, but I can't stand not being close to you. Before I could respond, his mouth was on mine, hot and demanding. The kiss was different this time, desperate, almost hungry. It was as if all the tension, all the fear and excitement we'd been holding back exploded in that tiny, dark room. His hands roamed my back, my shoulders, my hair, as if trying to memorize every part of me. I hate having to hide like this, I whispered when we finally pulled apart, both of us breathing hard. Then let's run away, he murmured, his forehead resting against mine. Let's just disappear. I laughed softly, but there was a sadness in it. You know we can't do that, he sighed, his hands cupping my face. I know, but it's getting harder, pretending like nothing's changed. I nodded, feeling the same conflict tearing at me. Being with him felt like fire and air, dangerous, consuming, but something I couldn't live without. But every moment we spent together made it harder to keep our secret. One day, I noticed the way the other students were looking at us. They didn't say anything, but I could feel their eyes following me whenever I stayed after class. Whispers started circulating, innocent enough at first, just comments about how much time I was spending with Mr. Rivers, how he seemed to favor me. But then I heard something that sent a chill down my spine. Do you think she's, you know, seeing him? One girl whispered to her friend as I walked past them in the hallway. My heart raced. If they were starting to notice, it was only a matter of time before the rumors reached the wrong ears. Panic clawed at my chest as I made my way to his classroom after school, needing to talk to him, to figure out what we were going to do. He was waiting for me when I arrived, his expression tense. I heard what they're saying, he murmured as soon as I closed the door behind me. James, we need to be more careful, I whispered, my voice shaking. He nodded, but I could see the frustration in his eyes. I know, but... I hate this. I hate having to pretend like I don't care about you when all I want to do is... Stop, I cut him off, my hands gripping his tightly. We have to be smart. If someone finds out... He closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. I know. I'm sorry. I just... 
I'm scared of losing you. The raw honesty in his voice made my heart ache. You won't lose me, I promised softly. We'll get through this. We just have to be careful. But being careful wasn't enough. The whispers turned into murmurs, the sideways glances into open stares. I could feel the walls closing in around us, the weight of our secret growing heavier with each passing day. And then, one afternoon, I walked into his classroom and found him sitting at his desk, his face pale and drawn. They know, he whispered, his voice barely audible. My heart stopped. What? Who knows? The administration, he said, his eyes haunted. Someone reported us. The room seemed to tilt around me. This was it. The end. Everything we'd been fighting to protect. Everything we'd been risking. Crumbling down around us. I felt numb. The fear and panic swirling inside me like a storm. What are we going to do? I whispered, my voice breaking. He looked at me, his gaze filled with anguish. I don't know. But whatever happens... I need you to remember that I love you. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. Love. He'd never said it before, not out loud. It was always there, in the way he looked at me, the way he touched me. But hearing it now, in the midst of everything falling apart, made it real in a way I wasn't prepared for. I love you too, I whispered, the words slipping out before I could stop them. And then, I was in his arms, holding on to him like he was the only solid thing left in the world. The next few days were a blur of meetings, accusations, and whispered conversations in empty hallways. The school launched an investigation, calling in parents, teachers, and students, trying to piece together the truth. I tried to keep my head down to act normal, but every time I looked at James, I felt the fear tightening its grip on my chest. And then, just when it seemed like things couldn't get worse, I got a message from him late one night. A single, heartbreaking text that shattered everything. I'm leaving. I'm so sorry. I can't do this anymore. I stared at the screen, my heart breaking into a million pieces. Leaving. What did that mean? The room was filled with an almost suffocating silence after our kiss broke. We stood there, just inches apart his breath mixing with mine, both of us trying to steady ourselves after what had just happened. The air between us crackled with unspoken tension. I could feel the weight of what we had done pressing down on my chest, and yet... I didn't regret it, not even for a second. Mr. Harris, no, James, took a step back, running a hand through his hair as if trying to regain his composure. His eyes flicked toward the locked door before returning to me, filled with a mix of emotions I couldn't quite decipher. There was confusion, yes, but also something else. Something that mirrored the feelings swirling inside me. This... This wasn't supposed to happen, he said, his voice barely a whisper. But there was no anger in his words, no reprimand. If anything, he sounded just as lost as I felt. I opened my mouth to respond, but the words caught in my throat. What was I supposed to say? That it didn't feel like a mistake. That the line between right and wrong had blurred so completely, I didn't know which way was up anymore? My mind raced, but my body had already made the decision for me. I stepped closer to him, reaching out without thinking. James... His name slipped from my lips before I could stop it. It felt strange, intimate, but right at the same time. He looked at me then, really looked at me, his gaze softening as he reached out and gently placed a hand on my shoulder. His touch was warm, grounding me in a way I desperately needed. We need to be careful, he said, his voice low and serious. This can't... I mean, it's complicated. I swallowed hard, nodding, even though every part of me wanted to tell him otherwise. Of course it was complicated. There were a hundred reasons why this shouldn't have happened, why we should have stopped ourselves before crossing that line. But none of those reasons seemed to matter now. All I could focus on was the way his presence made me feel, the way the boundaries between us had melted away, 
leaving only the raw, undeniable pull that had drawn us together. I know, I whispered, though my voice lacked conviction. I didn't want this moment to end, didn't want to face the reality of what came next. But the reality was already creeping in, and I could see it in the way James's shoulders tensed, the way his expression shifted from softness to something more guarded. I don't want to hurt you, he said, his hand still resting on my shoulder. This isn't... It's not easy for me either. I could feel the conflict in his words, the internal struggle playing out behind his eyes, and I understood it, maybe more than I wanted to admit. But the problem was, I didn't want to stop. Not now. Not when we had already gone this far. I stepped closer again, closing the small distance between us until our bodies were nearly touching. My heart raced in my chest and I could feel the heat rising in my skin, but I didn't care. It doesn't feel wrong, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. For a moment, I thought he might pull away, that he might break the connection between us and walk out of the room, leaving me standing there alone, questioning everything. But he didn't. Instead, his grip on my shoulder tightened ever so slightly, and he exhaled a long, shaky breath. There are consequences, he murmured, his voice strained. You know that. I nodded, biting my lip as my mind raced. I knew the risks, the potential fallout if anyone ever found out about what had happened here, about us. But none of that seemed to matter in the moment. All I could focus on was the way he looked at me, the way his touch sent shivers down my spine, the way my entire world seemed to shrink to just the two of us in that room. But no one has to know, I said, the words slipping out before I could stop them. My voice was quiet, almost pleading. I didn't know what I was asking for exactly, reassurance maybe, or some kind of promise that this wasn't a fleeting moment, that it wouldn't just end here, unresolved. James closed his eyes for a moment, as if weighing the decision in his mind, and when he opened them again, there was a softness there that made my heart ache. You don't understand how dangerous this is, he said, quietly, his voice thick with emotion for both of us. I wanted to tell him that I understood, that I knew exactly what the stakes were. But instead, I just reached up and gently placed my hand on his chest, feeling the rapid beat of his heart beneath my fingers. I don't care, I whispered. Not right now. There was a long pause, and for a moment, I thought he was going to push me away, to end this before it went any further. But then, almost imperceptibly, he leaned into my touch. His hand, which had been resting on my shoulder, slid down to my waist, pulling me closer until our bodies were pressed together. Time seemed to slow, and the air between us felt thick with anticipation. I could feel the warmth of his breath on my skin, the way his body tensed as he fought against whatever internal battle was raging inside him. But I knew, just as he did, that we were past the point of no return. Without another word, his lips found mine again, this time more urgent, more desperate than before. The kiss was no longer tentative or hesitant. It was filled with the passion we had both been holding back for so long. His hands gripped my waist tightly, pulling me even closer as I wrapped my arms around his neck, losing myself in the intensity of the moment. The world outside ceased to exist. There was no classroom, no school, no rules, just the two of us, tangled together in a whirlwind of desire and need. I could feel his hands on me, roaming, exploring, as if he was trying to memorize every inch of me. But even in the midst of it all, there was a nagging voice in the back of my mind, reminding me of the reality of our situation, of the risks we were taking. And yet, I couldn't stop. I didn't want to stop. His hands slipped beneath the fabric of my shirt, his touch sending a jolt of electricity through my body. I gasped against his lips, my pulse racing as he pulled me closer, his breath hot against my skin. The intensity of it all was overwhelming, but in the best possible way. But just as quickly as it had begun, he pulled back, his chest heaving as he tried to catch his breath. His forehead rested against mine, 
his eyes closed as he struggled to regain control. This can't go any further, he whispered, his voice thick with regret. Not here. Not like this. I didn't respond. I couldn't. My mind was still spinning from the rush of it all, and all I could think about was how much I didn't want this moment to end. He took a step back, putting some distance between us as he ran a hand through his hair again. We need to be smart about this, he said, his voice more steady now. I can't. We can't let this get out of control. I nodded, my heart still racing. I knew he was right, but the thought of walking away from this, of pretending like nothing had happened, felt impossible. We'll figure it out, he said, his voice softer now. But not here. And with that, he turned and unlocked the door, leaving the decision hanging in the air between us. The click of the door unlocking echoed in the silence of the room, but neither of us moved. We stood there, still breathing heavily, still too close, too caught up in the storm we'd created between us. James's hand lingered on the lock, his back to me, his body tense like he was trying to fight off the inevitable. But what was inevitable? That we'd walk away from this and pretend it never happened? Or that this, whatever it was, would only grow? pulling us deeper into something we both knew was wrong but felt so impossibly right. I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to think about the consequences or the reality waiting for us beyond that door. All I wanted was for this moment to stretch on a little longer, to hold on to the feeling of being close to him, of being wanted by him. James, I whispered, and my voice broke through the thick tension that filled the room. He froze his hand still on the door, his shoulders rising and falling with deep, controlled breaths. For a long moment, he didn't turn around. I could see the internal battle waging inside him, the struggle between his mind and his heart. But then, slowly, he let go of the door handle and turned to face me. His expression was one I hadn't seen before. Torn, conflicted, but beneath it all, there was that same intensity in his eyes. The same hunger that had driven him to kiss me in the first place. He took a step toward me, closing the distance again, and I could feel my pulse quicken. Every nerve in my body was on edge, every fiber of my being screaming for this not to end. This isn't right, he said softly. But the way he was looking at me, the way his eyes lingered on my lips, betrayed the words. He didn't want to stop any more than I did. James let out a shaky breath, his gaze falling to the floor for a moment before he looked back at me. This could destroy us, he said, his voice strained. You know that, right? I don't care, I said, and I meant it. I didn't care about the rules or the consequences. I didn't care about the risks. All I cared about was him, about the way he made me feel alive, seen in a way I hadn't felt before. I don't care. He looked at me then, really looked at me, and I could see the conflict in his eyes fading, replaced by something deeper, something raw and undeniable. And then, without another word, he closed the gap between us. His lips were on mine again, but this time, there was no hesitation. The kiss was urgent, full of need and desire, and I responded with everything I had. His hands gripped my waist, pulling me closer, and I could feel the heat of his body against mine, the way his touch sent shivers down my spine. I wrapped my arms around his neck, losing myself in the moment, in the feel of him. But there was more. There was always more. James's hands roamed over me, exploring with a hunger that matched my own. His fingers found the hem of my shirt, and in one fluid motion he lifted it over my head, tossing it aside without a second thought. My skin tingled under his touch, every inch of me alive with anticipation, with the need for more. He kissed me again, deeper this time, and I felt the weight of him pressing against me, pushing me back until my legs hit the edge of the desk behind me. Without breaking the kiss, he lifted me onto the desk, his body pressing between my legs as his hands slid over my skin, his touch igniting a fire inside me that I didn't know how to extinguish and I didn't want to. Tell me to stop, 
he murmured against my lips, but even as he said the words, his hands continued their slow, deliberate exploration of my body. I don't want you to stop, I breathed, my voice barely audible, but it was enough, enough to break whatever restraint he had left. His lips found my neck, trailing kisses down my skin, each touch sending waves of pleasure through me. My hands tangled in his hair, pulling him closer, urging him on as I arched against him, desperate for more, desperate for everything he could give me. The classroom faded around us, the world outside ceasing to exist. It was just us, just me and him and the heat building between us, the tension snapping like a taut string finally let loose. I had never felt anything like it before, this overwhelming rush of sensation, of emotion, and I didn't want it to end. But eventually, it did. The moment stretched on until it couldn't anymore, and reality came crashing back in, heavy and unavoidable. We stayed there for a long time, our breathing ragged, our bodies still tangled together. James pressed his forehead to mine, his eyes closed, and I could feel the weight of everything between us settling back in. The consequences, the risks, the impossibility of what we had just done. This can't happen again, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. You know that, right? I nodded, though the thought of never being this close to him again made my chest ache. I knew it couldn't last. I knew we had crossed a line that could never be uncrossed, and now, now we had to face what came next. He pulled back slowly, his hands lingering on my waist for a moment before he finally stepped away. The loss of his touch was immediate, leaving me cold and exposed in the quiet of the classroom. For a long time, neither of us said anything. The silence was thick, but it wasn't the same as before. It wasn't filled with tension, but with something heavier, regret maybe, or the crushing reality of what we had done. I care about you, he said quietly his voice so soft I almost didn't hear it. But this, it's too dangerous. I swallowed hard, nodding, even though I didn't want to. He was right. We both knew it. But that didn't make it any easier. I know, I whispered, my voice barely audible. For a moment, I thought he might say more, might try to explain himself to make sense of what had just happened between us. But instead... He just turned and unlocked the door once more, pushing it open. The world outside was waiting, and it wasn't kind. We both knew that. As I gathered my things and prepared to leave, I could feel his eyes on me, watching, waiting. And even though I knew this was the end, I couldn't help but steal one last glance at him before walking through that door and out into the world. I stepped out into the hallway, feeling the cool air hit my skin, but the weight of what had happened lingered, heavy and inescapable. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself, and so I walked away from that classroom, my mind in the clouds, 